Good morning. So, um, Catherine, thank you for um, joining us on this morning's Ask the Expert session. If I could just ask you for a moment to um, just introduce yourself and your background. Sure. My name's Catherine. I'm a skincare therapist. I've been in the skin health and wellbeing industry for over 30 years now and have had quite a lot of experience working with clients who have been diagnosed with cancer and what happens when they have the treatments and what happens to the skin. I have a skin clinic which is based in Bolton and I also run an online skincare shop as well to provide people with skincare for home use. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Um, so the first of the questions that we wanted to put to you today, um, in terms of skincare, we know some of the common myths that have developed um, within the cancer sector when it comes to women being able to and not to have um, treatments that they might otherwise have had previously. Um, cancer does not prevent women maintaining good skin care, does it? And moreover, that there are a wide range of choices and treatments available for them out there. Absolutely. I think at first people are always told, don't, don't, don't have anything, don't do this, don't do that. And there's so many things that you can still have. What I would say, if you're unsure with anything, check with your oncologist first, because everybody's personal journey is different. And then possibly don't try anything brand new. So things that you've previously had and you've been absolutely fine with, you're probably still absolutely fine to continue with. I'd probably simplify things a little bit and recommend that people stay away from anything that's quite powerful, like your alpha hydroxide type treatments and retinol and things like that. Um, but there's so many well-being treatments that people can still have. And it's really important, you know, that they do. So it is just a case of maybe strip it back a little bit and just try things in stages just to check that your skin is OK with it, particularly if you are going through treatment, because that tends to be when people react a little bit more to things. In terms of what, I mean, what has changed over the last few years? Because certainly when we started at Mummy Star, we still used to hear from, from women routinely that they would have, say, friends organise, you know, parties or pregnancy pamper parties for them. And one of the first things they would do would be to arrange a, you know, a spa day visit. And then sadly, mum would turn up and she would be the only one that wasn't then able to have a treatment that was, you know, as part of the range. What what has What's changed in, in spent centres and spa centres around, um, you know, sort of cancer treatment over the last sort of five to 10 years to make, you know, to make things more accessible? I think people are realising more the benefits of the well-being side of things to help people through the cancer treatment. And I think the knowledge has really grown because quite a while ago, everybody it was easier to say no because they were unsure. So it's easy just to stop every, have, everybody having things done. But I think now, because people are realising that there are more benefits to it, and a lot of the time it doesn't cause any problems with the cancer or with the treatments that they're having. So I think it's just that as therapists and spa places, they've become more knowledgeable and there's a lot more that we actually do with learning about cancer and the effects of how it has on the person. So I think we're just a lot more knowledgeable to be able to say that, yes, people can have certain things done now. So I just think it's grown within the well-being industry that it's um, there's a lot more things out there for people. And are there any? Is there any impact? Because again, one of the other things we, we hear and have heard in the past is there any issues around things like insurance for therapists, sort of you know providing therapies and um, you know to people who were who were on on active treatment for cancer. Yeah, a lot of the time active treatment is contraindicated to certain treatments, and insurances are very very strict on it. But if you know the person and you've been treating them previously, then you're aware of like how their skin is. So sometimes for us, when you're working with somebody, you kind of go through that journey with them. So you're a bit more knowledgeable of what things that they can have done or how you can help them with things like that. But yeah, insurance make it quite difficult because it's easier for insurance to say no to everything. So that's a lot of the problem sometimes. But a lot of the time as well, if you get a note from your oncologist, then that helps with the insurance purposes as well. Because if your oncologist is saying, that's fine for you to have that done, then the insurance will accept that as well. 
Right. Okay. That that's really useful to know, actually, so that people are, are just clear. And is it is it the case of just being aware of what treatment that person is is, is currently being is is currently having, um, or it, or could it be in terms of wider impact on the type of cancer that that person actually has been diagnosed with, and where it is in the body as to what you can and can't do? Yeah, that would definitely play an impact. I mean, things that we avoid doing is like anything that's going to increase the circulation and the lymphatic flow because we don't want to move that cancer. So um, there are certain cancer treatments that are localised to just that area. So, you know, for example, say something like somebody having a manicure, a simple thing just on the nails isn't going to affect any breast cancer issues or, lung, you know, things like that. So sometimes it's just more the simple self-care treatments that are easily available for everybody but yeah certain localized areas we we would definitely say to avoid so Catherine I was just wondering have you worked with people with cancer in the past and can you give examples of how your knowledge and expertise and experience have helped give them advice about um, the best way to go forward with their skin and looking after their skin? Sure. Yes, I've worked with quite a lot of clients who've um, gone through cancer and all the different treatments that they've endured as well. And particularly, uh, one of my really good friends has lung cancer. So she's going through an awful lot of chemotherapy, radiotherapy. She's on an awful lot of steroids and lots and lots of medication. And her skin has gone through such a journey it's been amazing one minute, no problems whatsoever. And then on a certain round of chemotherapy, it just goes out the window. And there was a time where it literally went so sensitive, it just looked burnt. So the whole of the cheeks were literally raw and she couldn't touch them. The like nerve endings of them were like so um, intense. Um, even just like cleansing her skin, everything really, really hurt the skin. And she was really suffering. She wasn't feeling great anyway. But because this was so visual as well, she couldn't cover it up because it was um, literally so sore. So because in the clinic, um, as a skin therapist, we do a lot of treatments using chemical peels and products like that to treat, um, say, like severe acne and scarring. So we've got a lot of things that we use that are quite aggressive on the skin when it's needed to actually improve the skin but when we do treatments like that we have a lot of ingredients in the products that we use as the aftercare to help replenish the skin so what I did with my friend is used the post peel kits that we have and we just really treated a skin to rebuild it desensitize it and within a couple of days the difference was unbelievable and um, we did actually take some pictures because it was so amazing to see the difference but it just made such a difference to her as well because she felt like she could go out because she was really self-conscious conscious of it but it was just that it was so sore so there's so much that we can do in those circumstances to help repair the skin and it's not about as a skin care therapist we're not about selling you hundreds of pounds of products to go and take away it's about that time your skin's really suffering so we'll provide you with samples little things that you can try and see how you go with it first of all it's about just getting your skin sorted because your skin isn't going to be like that forever so as a therapist I'm not going to sell you hundreds of pounds worth of things for that skin condition because you're only going to have that momentarily so I think it's really important that you do visit good skin care clinics there's a lot of beauty salons out there which they do general beauty treatments but they don't always have the knowledge as to what the skin can do when it's compromised and when it's going through like aggressive treatments like chemotherapy. So I think that's one of the key things is source a good skin care therapist. And there's there's lots of things on Instagram and social media where you can find somebody in your area as well. I work with a lot of other ladies in different um towns and countries so um there's there's a lot of us about we're really passionate about it because it is about just getting that care right at that time and it's not about a big sales hit because like I said before you're not going to need these products forever you're just going to need them till we get your skin back on track and then you go back onto more of a general skin routine and it's just a blip in the treatment program sort of thing because like with my friend the skin then was great for ages and then she got it again on another round, but it was on a different area. It was on her hands. So again, we just treated it the same and we got the same results with it. So um, it's all really personalised. But what 
the main thing is don't be afraid to ask people and don't be afraid to go into a skin clinic thinking because the biggest thing sometimes is people think I can't go out I couldn't go in I couldn't let somebody look at me like this and as a therapist it's we need we need it well, this, that's what we do we're passionate about being able to fix that for you sort of thing so it is really important that don't be embarrassed about it seek the help because it is out there great thank you